Live from New York at the Adafruit Factory, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, everybody. We're broadcasting live from the fantastic new, although it's not completely new, it's a couple months old, Adafruit Factory. Right. We finally uh, managed to move our operations That's right. over to, uh, now we're in West Soho, um, yeah. kind of above Tribeca and below the West Village. Um, so we've got a, a fantastic view of a part of the warehouse back here. We also have some different lighting and uh, really super fast internet connections we'll talk about. That's right. And, but we still have this lovely mic. Yeah. So uh, tell me what's on tonight's show. All right. On tonight's show, the code is snow because it's snowed in New York. We'll have some fantastic <laughs> photos and more from John De Niro. We have snow. the show and tell. Big news in the world of making maker media is a spinoff from O'Reilly, now make independent. We visited the math museum. We'll talk briefly about that. Lady Ada spoke at the Women's Entrepreneur Conference. Lady Ada doing the rounds this week was in distro. We got mailbag. We got community stuff. We got Time Travel Tuesday. We got some open source hardware news. We got Makey Makey Monday. We got Adafruit Learning System. We got Wearable Wednesday. We got 3D Thursday. We got Pi Day. We got some Web ID stuff. And new products, tons of new products this week. We're going to skip right to them as soon as we get going. We're going to have some top secret stuff. We're going to answer your questions. We're going to have a trivia question. And we're going to have a video of a cat because MOSFET is retired. He is home. So if you're here just to see a All live that, cat, this. You can go now. More on <laughs> Yeah, we have a video of MOSFET. Uh, no cat in the factory. But so. no, 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 no cat in the factory. He would, yeah. he would just get crushed or lost or I don't know. Not yeah. a good idea to bring him in. Okay. We no longer have a, a space small enough where we can find him in every corner. Yeah, that's right. So uh, first up, the code is snow. Snow. Ten percent off everything in the Adafruit store that's in stock. Ten percent off. Use the code if we snow. has it, you can buy it. Expires tonight at midnight. All right. Um, the code snow because it snowed. It was a, a, that was lovely snow. Here's a photo that John Janier took uh, right outside the Adafruit headquarters here. Beautiful photo. And yeah. uh, lots of kudos online. People like it a lot. Um, first up, let's uh, go right to the show and tell. Big pack night show and tell. What were the projects on the show and tell? Okay, we had a lot of fun stuff. Seamus showed up with a game of life clock that he built in one week using our LED matrix matrices. Um, we have like a 16 by 24 red matrix. He used that. And uh, an Arduino type thingy and uh, Chronodot. We also had Christian who showed up. He's from Slovakia, so it's really early in the morning. Um, but he stayed up to show us his thermal printer. Now it has Ethernet, so he has a web page. You can control this thermal printer over the Internet. Awesome. Ken also showed up again with more Pi ID stuff. He uh, showed a version of his Circuits I.O. board that has an uh, MCP 3008 ADC, and uh, he has it so you can like have eight sensors, and then you can have feedback with one of our LED backpacks, which is kind of actually a good idea. Um, Lon showed up with uh, the Quizometer again, and uh, this time it's also kind of doing some sort of lava lamp-esque thing. He also had it hooked up to a microphone um, amplifier board, one of my, our mic amps, I believe, um, so it could sort of be a VU meter, and he's working on that. Uh, Raymond showed up uh, with a really, like, tricked-out Lego at-at. Um, the one that you buy, it's like a little kit project from Lego, but it doesn't have lasers, which is sucky, because, like, why would you not want to have lasers? So he added a laser and a microphone amp board and a teensy. And so, like, when it... Here, hello. Sorry. Uh, when it hears um, like yeah, commands, it like will move its head and like fire the laser, and then um, he's at, he had an IR detector too, so you can control like how it moves. So it's like much more at at like. Yeah. It's intense. Uh, Michael showed up. He's at the Myrtle Beach uh, co-working space, which is kind of like a hacker space that they yeah, have there. Out of the bank. Cool. We just added an old bank, which is which is, maybe it's one of these banks that like didn't make it in the foreclosure crisis. It, now now yeah. it's a hacker space. So now it's actually contributing to society. One day when we're in charge, <laughs> we're going to turn all the banks into hacker spaces. There's like 80... Thousand chase locations in Manhattan. Imagine if each one of those had a laser cutter yeah, and a 3D printer that would be a lot more and useful. people making things. Instead of like every time we walk in, they're like, "Take a loan." We're like, "We don't want a yeah. loan." They're like, "But yeah, you do." You should take a high interest loan. You yeah. should take a high interest loan. Sorry. Uh, they uh, so they're, they're making some of the 3D printed dog treat machine. They also had a cool Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, Foursquare project that won the grand prize yeah. of this uh, Foursquare hacking. They get contest. to ring the Nasdaq yeah. bell, and they get to ring the Nasdaq bell, which is weird because I didn't know they had a bell. I thought it was just computerized. Yeah, but no, there's what, a bell. Watch out that you, they don't get like liquefied, like the Matrix or something, and like well, no. batteries. Um, the uh, from what I remember, um, iRobot had a uh, when they went public, 
the a robot. The Nasdaq or, or the New York Stock Exchange? Oh yeah, the stock New York Stock Exchange, Exchange has, yeah. a, has a bell, but I didn't know Nasdaq had a bell because Nasdaq yeah. doesn't have people in it. And does that mean that um, Foursquare is going public? I guess so. Who I knows? don't know what's going on. It's crazy out there. I think it's a trap by this like, Nasdaq robot to eat the flesh of really? of this co-working space. Well, I'm I'm worried about it. Okay. Um, and then what's this note? Uh, that's it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> like, what is a scribble? Um, that's it. Okay. Yeah, they're not. But that was a lot. They had right. a lot of stuff. That was a great show and tell. Okay. All right. Participants in the show and tell will receive a I see on the show and tell sticker, the email support data for Tom. If you want to earn the sticker, all you need to do is show your project on the show and tell. Each week we post up on Google Plus, Adafruit, I'm sorry, google.com forward slash plus Adafruit, and you can see the post and you can add yourself to the show and tell circle after you add Adafruit. Just post up what you want to show, and uh, that's about it. Okay. All right, let's, let's keep, go straight to the news. Let's keep moving here. We, got, we have a lot of news. This is a big, this is a big show. Okay. okay. Uh, giant news in the world of This uh, is interesting. Making. So Maker Media, yeah. is, which actually, so I don't know if some people knew, but Make the Magazine, which kind of is where we get the word maker from, Maker Spaces, Maker Bot, all, yeah. these, all these maker things. Yeah, they're popular. Yeah, pop, but I mean, nobody called themselves makers beforehand, really. Um, but Make Magazine, which has been around for like you know, nearly 10 years now, right? Yeah, Something almost like 10 years. Almost 10 years. And um, they were actually a subset of O'Reilly Publishing, which right. is this, the, the technical book publishing company. Yeah, the Tarsier on the cover. All the yeah. te- every, if you do programming, you've, you've the camel book bought or a pr- O'Reilly you know, book. Sendmail book. They or also whatever. have events. Lots of stuff. Yeah, they also have events and, and Web 2.0 and a lot of other stuff, which is, which is cool. And then Make has always been a subset of, of O'Reilly, but actually now they have spun off. They are now yeah. a separate company not yeah. owned by O'Reilly it's actually it's actually yeah, it's a, completely it's a full separate standalone make is now a startup not even a not even a whole fully owned subsidiary it's like totally it's a spin-off yeah totally spin-off so Dale is Dale CEO and president CEO. and uh, the, the everybody on the make team uh, is now maker media employees not O'Reilly employees yeah and they are they're their they're their own company their own yeah. business so they've got the, the the publishing side which is the magazine and the website they've got uh, Maker Shed, which is a store, and Maker Fair, which is a series of worldwide yeah. events now. So um, very cool. It'll, uh, what a what a neat thing to see because Make covers Maker businesses now. Make is part of the story. Make is a Maker business. Um, yeah. Other you know kind of uh, interesting things in the world of publishing. And Chris Anderson left Wired to be the CEO of DIY Drones. Yeah. Everybody likes making businesses now around this maker movement, yeah, including cool. Make. So. And this is really good and it's also, you know, they're, they're growing up and this is cool, they're now independent. They're going to it, it things are going to move a lot faster because they're they're no longer I mean, I'm not going to say held back, but like they they're they're more independent. Yeah. I, I think, think it well, this is uh, you know, if if O'Reilly is going to be an, a, a business incubator, this is kind of a neat thing. Yeah. They could uh, help get a, a business started like Make, yeah. and then as soon as it gets to a p- certain point, it says, "Great, spin it off," yeah. and then keep doing that over and over and over again. Okay. So very cool. All right. Uh, next up, we visited the Math Museum. We posted up all the photos. Um, check it out. It's uh, very unique. Um, this is in New York City. Um, it's uh, Union Square Park. Uh, the door has this uh, pie symbol, which is really you can't cool. Can't miss it. Really neat exhibits. No, not Union Square Park. It's a oh, Madison Square Madison Park. Madison Square Park. Yeah. So you get some Shake Shack, and then we'll yeah. uh, see the Math Museum. And uh, it, I think it's one of the only museums like it in the world. I have um, not seen a Math Museum. I've yeah. seen a Science Museum. There's a couple little things they filmed. Um, these are, uh, I believe, they're like laser etched pieces of metal that when you move they look like holograms. Yeah, these are cool. And then um, I liked some of the things that they did. Problem solving and progress. When something's broken, one of the exhibits yeah. are broken. Well, we went there like that. the weekend they opened, so it was like they were still f- building stuff, figuring yeah. out. Yeah, and then um, this uh, exhibit that I'm about to show a video of, you rode this when they were fundraising. Yeah, like we went to the five, fundraiser. Four or five years ago. Now, um, there's just tons of people um, uh, using this at the museum, and it's a square wheeled bike. Uh, next up, Lady A, you spoke at a conference this week, the ITP's Women Entrepreneurs Festival 2013. That's right. I was what there. did you talk about? We talked about scaling a business, mm-hmm. and um, on my team, wa- uh, not on my team, on my panel, um, was uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, operating officers of Gawker. Actually, I don't, I don't know their title, but uh, uh-huh. not Gawker. Um, curbed. Curbed. Sorry. Uh, don't shoot me. 
Curbed or Gawker for confusing you two. Um, but she was on the she was operating officer of Curbed, and then there was also a woman who was um, uh, an operating officer at um, a, a, a kids a clothing company yeah. um, in in South Carolina. And um, unfortunately, I don't remember their name, but um, do check out. Um, the more information about the conference, there's a lot of really great great speakers. Yeah, I thought the questions were fantastic. I was in the audience. It was a very small room. I mean, like what was like yeah. what was nice about this event was that we had only like 20 people, 20 30 people in the room, and so we did some talking. We sort of like covered some of the topics, but then people would um, ask questions like, okay, like you know, should I get a loan or should I go for grants or, you know, how do I hire good people and like a lot of questions that um, small business owners have when going from a small company, you know, maybe one, two or three people, like a little micro company to maybe a company with 50 people, um, which is still considered small, but it's still, you know, which would be considered scaling for an entrepreneur. And it's really hard. It's really hard to do it right. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of pitfalls, and like you know, sometimes people give you advice, but that advice can actually sink you. Yeah. Um, you know, some people were asking about, you know, should I go for a headhunter? And I was like, well, if you hire people to do headhunters, that can really deplete um, your your cash um, storage because like it costs fifty thousand dollars or more to hire yeah. somebody through a headhunter. That's a lot of money. You know, here's some other ways that you can find really good people from yeah. within your community to hire. Yeah, and you told the story about how we hired uh, Tyler and Justin, who uh, we're going to show some of their work here. Yeah. Um, we found them in the community. Uh, Kevin uh, was in the community. Kevin was in the community. Paint Your Dragon Phil was in the community. Um, you know, your, your advice, I think, sounds weird to them. It's like, well, start a community in a web show and have um, all but the cool people. But already have, they already have, like, Facebook and Twitter accounts. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you, you should use these, like, meet really cool people yeah. that, that you think can you know, really help you and you can help them. You know, there's a lot of people out there looking for work. You don't have to, you don't have to go well, through an agency. Also, you, you want you someone who, who's engaged in the community and doing cool stuff and publishing. Yeah. And they're, they're, they, they like doing this anyways. Yeah. So anyways, I thought that was, I thought that, that was, that, it was, it was a neat, it was a neat thing uh, to see. Um, and uh, yeah, I think one of the themes was there's a lot of bad advice out there and you have to know um, yeah. what, what, sometimes if you do the opposite, you're better off. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, maybe we'll have one uh, a business session one night. We'll do an ask an engineer all about business stuff. Ask a business. Ask ask, a ask bi- an entrepreneur. Business engineer. Okay. Uh, other lady Ada stuff in the news here. You were in in Gadget Distro. They have a um, Android, Web. iPad, everything PDF app thing. Yeah. So here you are. They they were here. They took photos, and it has a neat interview with you. And then um, you also did a video this week. Um, it was from the Entrepreneur event, um, and you have a video interview. And if people are interested, there's uh, good business tips and advice. And then you got this in the mail. So check this out. This is Lamore's award from. Uh, it's like a bowling ball. Yeah, uh, this is the Entrepreneur of the it's Year. It's like a glass. It looks like something that came out of you know Superman's grandma's knickknack house. It's super cool. Um, <laughs> Superman grandma's like what? <laughs> yeah, like it, the knickknack thing. Yeah. Um, but look at this thing. Super knickknacks. Yeah, it looks. It's really heavy. It's made of glass. So yeah, look at this. Yeah, thing. watch out! Don't drop it. No, it's like some it. weird gigantic super fused cool. glass. So that thing that was shipped via UPS. It was made neat. from some by some local artist. Yeah. Yeah, they shipped to UPS ground. Well packed. Okay. Uh, next up. Mailbag. Yeah, let's dig right in. Whew. Pack okay. it. Pack mailbag. Time. There's pack of the mailbag. Okay, this is this week's mailbag. These are letters from customers and people in the community, and here's what they have to say. Barack, wait, is this the president? As a satisfied customer and an Adafruit addict, I find myself identified with a thank you letter in the from your mailbag corner. As a non-American customer, I felt the need to personally thank you uh, and praise the idiot-proof purchasing process. I don't have to guess the shipping fees, hooray, as well as the size of wear packing, thus keeping international shipping fees to the lowest possible. Thank you, Adafruit Barack. So not, not the president. Not the president, not yet. But I think any good president who wants great electronics at great value would shop at Adafruit. That's true. Okay. Next up, on the community stuff. First up, Matt's going to say hi. <laughs> okay. Hi, Matt. Hey, this is Matt, director of community and support at Adafruit. And uh, I've spent a lot of this week looking at uh, a lot of some cool customer support possibilities that I'm hoping to roll out next week, worked on it this week. And I've been hearing back from a lot of people who are really interested in ways to make enclosures for the electronics we offer here. And uh, I've been playing around with OpenSCAD, 
and talking to a bunch of our 3D designer community members and uh, am hoping to help provide some resources to help everybody make the tools they need to make the bezels, the cases, the enclosures, the mounting points that they need for all of these products. Thank you very much. See you next week. Okay, and okay. next up. Um, Hi, Matt. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have um, folks check in every single week. Uh, Becky does a check in, Matt does a check in. Um, we have a uh, community corner video. Mm -hmm. This is from the Google Plus communities that we just started. We're almost up to 40,000 people. And every week we uh, do a quick video of what's going on in the community. Here is this week's video. Good afternoon and welcome to Monday here in my modified dining room slash uh, thrust test facility. Hobby King 6x3 standard folding prop, that's going to be compared with my custom uh, 6x5.5 folding props. I designed these and had them printed on Shapeways. And here goes nothing. Okay, next okay. up, that was community. Now we're on to Time Travel Tuesday. Every Tuesday we have a look back in the maker world. We just, uh, we're going to blow through these. Go check out the Time Travel Tuesday post. But back in 2011, Short Becky, hair Becky. Becky and Matt doing Make Live. Back in 1948, check this out. This is January 24th, 1948. IBM dedicated an early prototype called Selective Sequence Electronic Calculator in New York City. The machine occupies a 30 by 60 room with space for a punch card operator to work in the center. This is one of the first computers. 1948 IBM doing this. Look at this thing. It's cool. Amazing. Next up. It was computing. Curie. 1911. On January 23rd, 102 years ago, after having already earned a Nobel Prize, Mary Curie was denied entrance to the French Academy of Sciences. She went on to win a second prize despite the Academy. <laughs> Damn you. Yeah. Um, did you know that her papers are still radioactive, and if you want to review them, you have to sign a waiver? That's cool. Isn't that cool? <laughs> she has impact. Okay. <laughs> Next up, some news in the world of open source hardware. Okay. Yeah, so, what is this news? Yeah, so we got some, uh, so we got some fun right. stuff. First up, um, the Arduino team visited. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, we didn't have time to post a photo last week, but uh, the Arduino team visited Massimo and Tom and uh, Alicia, and uh, they came in, and we also had uh, Colin and Molly and Becky and me and you, and we had a great meeting. Lots of cool stuff in store with Arduino. Uh, Chatting about the future. Fantastic to see um, our friend Massimo, who came all the way from Italy, and yep. Tom is here in New York, and uh, I meet a new friend there. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, in our uh, ongoing effort to have the best stuff in fritzing, John Janeer made the Arduino Micro in fritzing. Yay! You can download it right now. Very handy. You just put it on a breadboard. Super handy. Wire stuff up. Um, also, in the world of open source hardware, um, Wired has an article with SparkFun in. I thought this was an interesting quote because it was all about patents. And this is a quote from uh, Nate, the, the founder of SparkFun. And basically, um, they're saying patents are, you know, IP obesity. These yeah. things will just, w uh, they'll just drain your resources and you won't actually get anything mm -hmm. done. Um, you won't be innovating. So, um, this what is. What did he say? Yeah, well, this is the quote. I thought this was cool. Maybe you think I'm naive, he continues. Maybe you think an open source company can't be scaled above 150 people. That's fine. I'm sure patents will work for you. But for myself, my 135 coworkers, $75 million of sales, 600,000 customers, and our 430 unpatented products, wish you good luck. That's pretty neat because we're, we're uh, almost... We're getting there as far as the number of uh, customers, mm -hmm. products, um, and revenue. And I, I like seeing uh, some of these companies out there sharing those numbers because if you're ever thinking about running an open source hardware company, um, we don't really have to prove anymore that it's a good idea and a good model. Yeah. There's uh, Adafruit, there's Make, there's SparkFun, you know, Parallax. there's Parallax, there's DIY drones, there's... Uh, lots of companies that have done open source hardware in some way, mm -hmm. MakerBot, and it's working out. Yeah. Aya, Little Bits. Mm -hmm. These are all flourishing companies and they're doing open source hardware. So, anyways, good article. It's on Make. Uh, sorry, it's on Wired. <laughs> uh, what is that mixing up media uh, companies I know, today? I know, I know. How do they all merge and get yeah. over with? All right. Next up. Back it up to Makey Monday. Monday. Every Monday, we try to highlight a cool project. 
in the world of Mickey Mickey. Mickey Mickey, Mickey made by Jay Silver, who we worked with with uh, uh, Drardia. Yeah. And uh, here's Mickey Mickey. We sell these in the store. And uh, this one, I just picked one this week. Look at this. Giant Mickey Mega Mickey. Mega Mickey Mickey. This one eats little Mickey Mickeys for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's scary. It, yeah, it's made out of many, many Mickey Mickeys. Okay. All right. Next up, we're going to keep going. Uh, Adafruit Learning System. Learn.adafruit.com. The best place online to learn electronics and everything. The best, hands down. This is what we hear every day. We have a we 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 need to start a separate mailbag just for a learning system. Okay. Um, we work I'm, hard on I'm it. I'm glad I'm glad you get all the positive emails because I only get the uh, bug reports. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And corrections. You keep all the good emails to yourself. Well, uh, t- Justin and Tyler get the bug reports. That's too. true. We, um, yeah. But there's not that many. That's not that many. Squishing the bugs. Okay. This week um, we have an updated tutorial. Uh, maybe no new tutorial. New tutorial. Sorry. New. Okay. New. We okay, actually do, didn't we do the step tutorial this week? Too? Yeah, yeah. But you tell, talk about this one first. Oh, this is um, uh, Kevin Townsend, also known as the K Town, wrote a really fantastic article um, using uh, our ultimate GPS with the Raspberry Pi. People have asked us for this tutorial, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. We actually have two versions of this tutorial. We have um, one version where we show how to u- connect up the ultimate GPS through USB. Yeah. So you just use our USB cable, which is really handy because you can just like plug it in and unplug it whenever you want. It's like a lot easier um, to do, and you don't have to give up the uh, serial port. And then this version, which is a little less expensive because it doesn't require a USB to serial converter, you can use the onboard UART, but it means you have to get rid of the console. So you lose the console, which uh, can be handy. Trash. But as a cha- you know, in exchange, you can wire the... Um, uh, the ultimate GPS directly to the Raspberry Pi, and then there's um, a great GPS daemon, GPSD, which you can use that will actually do all the parsing for you and tell oh, you cool. like where you are, and you can print out like custom stuff, and it's like super easy to use, and you can like build a time server. Anyways, it's super yeah. cool, and uh, this is a great um, GPS unit to use because you can have an external antenna connected. Yeah. Um, with up, you know, we have these d- antennas with like ten foot of cable, so you can have the cable go out your window, so you don't have to have the pie next to the window or outside, okay. where it would get wet. All right. Uh, next up, the ongoing series "Learn Raspberry Pi" with Lady Ada and Dr. Simon Monk. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. This one is a tutorial on using a stepper motor. We did a tutorial on servo motor, and we did a tutorial on a DC motor. And this time we're doing stepper motors. And this one talks about using either a ULN. Uh, Three something something. I don't remember the name of it. Um, uh, unipolar driver or a L293D bipolar slash unipolar driver. You know, use whichever chip you want for uh, this motor. Because this is a unipolar motor, you can use either one. If you're using bipolar, you used to use the L293D. Yeah. But whatever. The the idea is the same, and it shows how to use a GPIO to uh, basically send the stepper wave, so you can step a motor and you can drive as many motors as you have pins. So you could probably control three or four motors pretty easily. Um, which is which is awesome, and uh, I hope to see some people doing a good, cool separate motor project with these guys. All right, next up, moving along, we're gonna move fast. Here is Wearable Wednesday every week. Becky Stern does a bunch of posts on site about wearable electronics and more. Uh, we like to, of course, have our own projects uh, to help people get started with wearable electronics. Mm-hmm. This week, really cool project from Becky piezo and the flora the flora is our arduino compatible platform and here's becky welcome to wearable wednesday everybody today i'm playing around with this piezo transducer and the flora so what the piezo does is it can take a square wave over a pwm pin uh, to play tones and i have it uh, programmed to play the super mario brothers theme whenever i turn it on And so I've also added a a magnetic pin back that makes it really easy to attach to my sweatshirt. And I'm also using one of our new JST extension cables, which gives me some extra slack for putting the battery pack in the pocket. So check out all of our Flora tutorials on the Adafruit Learning System. We've got a whole big bunch of them by now. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube for another Wearable Wednesday update next week. Okay. I like that project because it shows both the uh, the uh, really quick thing you can do with the Flora and like soldering to it. Yeah. And also our uh, awesome new battery extendo cables. Yeah, those are neat. Yeah. All right. 3D Thursday. Uh, every week there is lots of projects in the blog that have uh, some type of 3D printing. Yeah. I picked two this week. Um, let me uh, grab them real quick. They're, uh, 
Oh yeah, there's the 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 cool patenty thing. Yeah, there's there's two things. One, All right. First up, this is an interesting one. Yeah. This is a new patent from iRobot for sort of a 3D manufacturing machine that sort of d does 3D printing, milling, and finishing, which is actually kind of interesting because that would actually allow you to do um, manufacture most things because some stuff you can mill, some stuff you can 3D print, yeah. and then you still need to do some sort of finishing, either painting or. Um, you know, encapsulating or whatever. So this is some sort of uh, all-in-one uh, manufacturing robot. So we'll see if they, first off, they just filed the patent, they didn't get the patent. So we'll see what happens yeah. with that, uh, if it's patentable or not, and uh, whether it's something they're planning to make. And this, um, I like this one a lot. These are 3D printed dresses. So fashion designers are starting to print out, and I'll zoom in to the back of the dress here. You can see that it's, it's 3D printed. And it's, yeah, it's, it's like a structure. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. A structure with mesh and stuff. Yeah, so here we go. So you can see the, uh, the, the 3D printing. Yeah. It's quite nice. That's cool. Yeah. Goth. Okay, next up. Pi Day. Pi Day. All right, so we have, there's a million posts on Pi Day. And just look at them. Um, just uh, yeah, go look at them. The blog has endless scroll. What we're going to show today is just a few minutes of a video that we released. This is... Um, doing code inside of the Raspberry Pi Web IDE from Adafruit. And uh, repositories and, and stuff. And repositories. Yeah. So I'm just going to I'm just going to play like just the first like 30 seconds or so cuz we got a lot of stuff. But this just gives you a really good idea of what we're up to. So this is the uh, Raspberry Pi Web IDE Adafruit Learning System. Here's Tyler with uh, some video. Like I said, I'm going to cut a little short. Take it away, Tyler. The Adafruit Learning System Raspberry Pi Web IDE is a powerful yet easy to use integrated development environment for your Raspberry Pi. This is part two in a series of videos that cover every aspect of the Raspberry Pi Web IDE. In our previous video, we went through how to install the Web IDE, so if you haven't already installed the Web IDE, you may want to start with that video first. We also have a great step-by-step -step guide on how to install it at learn.adafruit.com slash web IDE. Launch the Web IDE by typing raspberrypi.local into your browser. If you are signed into Bitbucket, you'll see the initial starting screen of the editor. The editor is broken up into a few sections in its most basic form. To the left you have the file and folder navigator. Click on a file or folder to open them and navigate back by clicking on the blue section at the top. To the right we have the editor section where you will do most of your work. The top part of the editor is where you will write and edit code and at the bottom... Okay, so watch the full video on the Adafruit site. Uh, the Web ID, we're spending a lot of time, resources, making this the best way to learn programming, specifically Python right now. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, one of our goals is for um, schools for everyone to use something like this or this to help teach programming. We have a visualizer. Um, it's going to be part of our Linux distro install mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff that we're doing. Yep. So we'll have an update to Occidentalist soon. Um, before we get on to new products, the code is snow. 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 10% off. Everything is stock in the Adafruit store. Um, just it's a little real, slushy right now. Yeah, it's, just, just, but slushy would have made yeah. it too long of a code. Just real quick, I've been waiting for a really long time to do this. Ready? Near... You're far. <laughs> All right. We can barely see you. What? Run closer. Yeah. Closer. It's new product time. Everything's okay. I don't, I'm not going to do that, by the way. Okay. It's new products. See, that's the problem. We had a cat. The cat would do that all the time. We just want to run back and forth as fast as possible. Yeah. All right. New products. Okay. Let's just dive right in. Updated product. So this is an updated product. We have um, these um, RGB LCD plates for the Pi back in stock. Um, and, yeah. and now, it, um, some people noticed, and also it's in the description of the product, the buttons are on the right-hand side. Um, I can show in the overhead if we can just move yes, fast. Yes, we have an overhead. I just want to show what, what we did. So I, just, I actually, when I first made this, I made this just like the Arduino version. And um, the buttons were on the left side. But um, the problem is, is that if you pressed here, it would it was kind of bendy like this. I didn't like that. So instead, um, we have the buttons on the right side. So it presses up against the uh, Ethernet jack. It's a little bit stronger, in my opinion. So mechanically, a little bit better. Um, otherwise, same code, same everything. Have it in you know, RGB, blue and white, two types. It's all good. OK. Let's keep moving. OK. We have these quick wires. This I have to show on the overhead because this is a little bit weird. But basically, these are um, these are quick disconnect wire sets that can be used with our um, waterproof buttons or our arcade buttons. So I'll show it with an arcade button. Um, so for example, here's an arcade button, and you see that they have these little like gold tabs on the end. And um, 
it would be kind of a pain to have to solder to them, especially if you have a, something where you want to like be able to um, lift up or, or remove the buttons later or swap them out. So now what you can do is, is you just press these on, these quick disconnects, and they're exactly the right size. It's lovely. And then um, they're mechanically connected, but you can also pull them out. And then they come to like a 2.5 millimeter, like 0.1 inch connector. I don't exactly know what connector this is. I think it's GST something, but I, I couldn't quite figure it out. Um, but then, yeah, you can then remove these. And they come in a set of 10. They also work great with our, our metal waterproof buttons as well. And uh, you get a whole bunch of these. So if you're making some sort of arcade thing, um, this would be probably really handy. Yeah. Good stuff. I like these. Okay, next up. You ready? Yes. Oh, you know what? Let's, um, can I show the extrusion first? Which one? The, uh, it's probably last. That. Can I show that last? Okay. Yeah, okay. Because uh, otherwise it's confusing. It's like, what are you showing? Sure. Um, so we now have... We've got extrusion. Extrusion. So let's go to the big um, image because it's so big. So um, extrusion is, it's basically these aluminum sort of like, like, I, I, Americans know them as like erector sets. And I think in, in Europe they use Meccano. Me Meccano mm -hmm. or Me Meccano or something. So it's these um, these tubes, and they have sort of this sort of cross shape. So you can see there's a cross shape. So the show isn't in 3D. Put on your glasses, Phew. folks. You so we sell this stuff. It's basically made out of a, a solid aluminum um, and ex extruded, right? They have this you know this profile, and they push the aluminum out, and that's why it's you know it's perfectly straight, uh, made out of aluminum. Um, I like this because, first of all, it's really easy to cut. So we sell it in two foot lengths, which is a little bit more than 600 millimeters. Um, but it's aluminum, so you don't need a table saw to cut it, cut it with a hacksaw. Yeah. And you use a bandsaw if you have a bandsaw, but if you don't, you can just use a hacksaw. I've done plenty of projects where I just use a vise and a hacksaw to cut this stuff. Yeah. Really easy to cut. That's what I like is you don't need power tools yeah. to, to do this. You do need a vise to, to grip it. Yeah, but but the, then, a vise is not a power tool, though. It, that's true. Yeah. Um, so we have the extrusion, and then we have all the stuff that goes with it. So the, the cool stuff about extrusion, and we sell a type of extrusion called open beam, which is, which is thinner. This is 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter. This is kind of what I think is, is pretty strong. I mean, like, this is, doesn't really bad. Yeah, you can't. Um, this is really strong stuff, a little bit stronger than the open beam. Um, and this is also kind of a more standard size. Um, it's, this is really good for building robots, 3D printers, uh, CNC stuff. Yeah. It, you know, it's not like a, for, like, massive, huge CNC, but for, like, pretty much any hobbyist CNC, um, this stuff will do the job. So let's go through all the fun accessories we have. Okay. So, so starting in addition with, to the extrusion, yeah. we have these corner brackets. These are corner braces. So when you want to put two pieces together at a 90 degree angle, which is really common, you like use this. this. You put them together and you use um, the, uh, hex the, the, sorry, the button cap and the T-nuts to, to attach it. We have these caps. The caps go on the end and make for a nice finishing. Um, I think they're nice to have something to finish it. Comes with a pack of 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have these T nets, so let me show you um, how these work. Can we go to the overhead? Because this yeah. is this is a little bit weird, how um, how these things work. Okay, so you've got your extrusion, and uh, you know you, there's a slot in the middle um, that I showed you from the um, from the end, and um, to use it, what you do is you can grab these special um, nuts, and they're they're you know, M4, I think, so they're, they're metric nuts. And then basically what you do is you see how that there's, there's, this is like curved a little bit, but then there's a point. So it's not, it's not like square, it's, 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 it's not round either, there's like a little point. So when you put it in, and then if you grab a uh, button screw, and then you also grab a uh, hex wrench, and I'll, uh, I'll attach like one of these plates. Sorry, I'll attach this corner, corner brace. So if you want to attach something, so you've got this corner brace, you place it right over. So you can see it. Yeah, like that. And then you place the screw inside there, line it up, and then when you twist it, it will, um, because the, the, the nut is not, it, it's, it will fit in sideways, but as you turn it, it'll uh, bind up against the sides. Um, it's now solidly attached, so oh, wow. like this is not moving. This is but, the first live demonstration on the internet, I think, of this ever happened. I don't know. 
But um, <laughs> the cool thing is that it's really easy to, you can loosen it, reposition it, and then when you're ready, you just tighten it down again. Yeah. And uh, it's really easy. All you need is, is a hex wrench to basically assemble anything you want. And then, yeah, you know, you can like auto it. locks. It's cool. Then you take another piece, and then you know you can you connect it like this, yeah. and then you can have another brace if you want. So that's how the system works. So the the there's you know these special nuts, and you know we sell them in a pack of fifty. They are a little bit special. Like they are they're called T nuts, and they're designed specifically for use with extrusion. Um, Open Beam doesn't use these. It actually uses everyday hex nuts. But yeah. I think this is you know. Yeah, I wish that these were all used like everyday hex nuts, but this isn't too bad. Like these only cost like twenty cents each, so it's not uh, it's not so bad. All right. All right. Let's keep moving along. Let's so, move along. Uh, yeah. Did you want to uh, talk? So about yeah. So these slide through the top, and then here's just a demo showing them being screwed on. Yeah. And then there's also the hex wrench. Okay. So then there's the, the oval style, and I'll show these also on the overhead. So there's two types. There's the T nuts that I just showed, and then there's these oval style. Okay. So oval style. Is like oval team. No, it's it's a little bit actually easier to understand. They're oval shaped, and so when you, sorry, I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, these slide in, and they they kind of slide, and they they're like exactly the right size to go inside, and so they can only slide in from the end, and so that makes them a little harder to use because they can't. You can't fit them from the top. Okay. They won't fit. It also means that they're not going to slide out. I don't know from the, depending. You know that yeah. that might be something you want. But they're they're less expensive because they're stamped, not um, cast. I think these are cast and these are stamped. So these are a little bit less expensive. Uh, some people like them, so we have both types. But yeah, these slide from the side, and the other ones slide from the top. But ba same basic idea. You use um, the button hex cap screws, and you tighten them in, and uh, as you can tell, the oval shape will not move. It'll bind up against the slot and um, attach permanently. Okay. Okay. All right. And here's just more yep. photos of them action. And then there's these uh, little hingy things. There's hingy things. Um, they do this. Actually, this photo is pretty easy to understand. There's yeah. hinges that come with it. We yeah. also uh, have all the screws you need. Yeah, and here's the screws that go with the hinges. Yeah, there's some screws and showing you know, you attach. You can have hinges attached to the stuff. More screws. Um, there's plates, so I can show some of the plates on the overhead. But um, basically, uh, you know, we have these plates, and these plates have the holes exactly 20 millimeters apart, so they'll line up. Um, you know, if you want to connect, all the holes line up with multiple pieces. So that can be really handy if you're if you're you know connecting something and the corner braces are really good but like if you want something really strong you might want to go with uh, one of these L braces where you get multiple holes. Yeah, and uh, I'll show a couple more photos of these. Yep. Hinges. Some more hinges, hinge action, hingerific. These are the th three hole couplers, two hole couplers, L plates, L plates in action, T plates. T plates in action. This is the cross plate, so you can connect four pieces. And, and then this is the extrusion. Just showing it. It's it's long. There it is. So that's yeah. That's the that's the extrusion. So we have a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to get more stuff that you can use with extrusion soon. But we think that all of what we got so far should get you started. Okay. Um, just a little bit of a recap here. Here's the watch. This is our Times Square watch, and this is a little animated GIF. And this week, we're launching a lot of new colors. So yes. we have a ton of photos, and let's take a look at them. Uh, We've got tangerine, yeah, which is kind of orange colored. And uh, this one looks really nice. And it's just showing all the different uh, options. The scrolling text never looks quite good on the photos, but um, you'll have to believe us. There's also lime green. Yeah. It's a nice green color. We also have blue, classic blue, and we have white. And the um, the orange and green, because they're the same, the, the matrices are the same color as the red matrix, they're the same price. Um, the blue and white, blue and white LEDs are more expensive, they always are, and so um, the, the watch is a little bit more expensive, and so I even have, okay. I have, uh, just to demonstrate the two, we have a 
Actually, yeah, let's do it on the other right? head. Yeah, because it's so bright with that light. Yeah, it's a little more shady. Right. Let's go here. So this is the watch, and then this is showing the times. It's ten thirty-nine. And then this is just the uh, the watch part. Oh, upside down. This one's not set to the right time. <laughs> <laughs> so it says twelve oh six a.m. Oh, I just turned this on. Um, so yeah, you can see that there's this nice bright white with a yellow phosphor. And so we have all sorts of different colors. Um, they're all last as long. They're all really bright. We got yeah. really really high end matrices so they can run off a coin cell. Yeah. This is the coolest Jaguar watch in all the colors you could possibly want. Yeah. So these are again, these are all the different colors. You can check them out. Do you have a favorite color, Lady Ada? I am. Um, I kind of like the green, actually. You like the green? The green looks really cool. Yeah. I like the green a lot. That's nice. Okay. Okay. Next up. Oh, the on wrench. We showed this already. This is that's the tool I use right. to put those uh, extrusions together. Okay. Handy. So and people are like, "Hey, you should have an Allen wrench." I'm like, "You're right." So. But wait, there's the more. There's more. We have these little S and T mini sets. Actually, it doesn't really make too much sense to show them on the overhead because they're so small. Um, yeah. But we have uh, S and T breakout boards for TQFP 44s, TQFP 32s, QFN 44s, QFN uh, 32s, uh, SOIC and T stops 28. 20, 16, 14, 12, maybe, yeah. I don't remember. And maybe and you eight. can, for the, for the people who aren't really into electronics, but just love watching yeah. the show, why do you need these breakout boards? What is it doing? This is, these are handy little adapters for when you're dealing with small chips, mm -hmm. and you want to use a breadboard. So sometimes the... So the surface mount to breadboard yeah, chip adapter, basically. Chip adapters, mm -hmm. they're little breakouts, and so oftentimes <laughs> the, the new sensors, the new op amps, the new chips that you want to use microcontrollers they don't come in dip anymore it's yeah. very rare um, so oftentimes you'll need to use an adapter so this way you can solder the chip onto this adapter and then use it like as a breadboard and I use these all the time and um, I used to buy these from like DigiKey for like five or six bucks each or other places they're, they're really, really expensive. expensive they can be really expensive and so I was like you know, I should really. I actually designed my own at the Media Lab, and I made a bunch. And I recently ran out, and so I was like, "Oh, you know, I should like probably sell these." Um, so this batch that we are doing right now has. Um, it's actually a mini set, because I didn't want to sell these individually for like fifty cents each. I was like, "Well, you know, you probably need more than just one." So you yeah. actually get um, a whole bunch of PCBs. You get uh, thirteen PCBs, all in one. Yeah. And they actually come in a little break break apart sheet. So you get um, five pieces that are for uh, SOT23, which is a common small transistor um, part. And so you get a SOT23-6 on one side, and then two SOT23s on the back. Uh, we also have one that's a TO252. It's a common for regulators and some power transistors. Yeah. And we also have one package that'll do a SOT89, also good for transistors and regulators, on one side, and a SOT223 on the other. Also, so these are common transistor regulator parts. And how much are we charging for these? Uh, you get 13 for five bucks. 13 for five bucks? That's crazy. Actually, you know what? Some we so we put we put these up on like Google Plus, and someone says, you know, five dollars each. That's that's not so good. It's like, and all these people said, no, it's for all of them. And he's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, like I just I think that you should get a lot. Yeah. Like, there's there's like there's not a lot going on there. There's not a lot going on here. Yeah. I thought I have to run these to the pick and place. Um, they're nice gold plated PCBs. Ten percent off now tonight. Too, and they're ten percent yeah. off. And um, we will do like a super pack where you get like one of each. Yeah. Um, we have. You know what's gonna happen is everybody who's been overcharging everyone they're gonna have to lower their prices now. Yeah, they're gonna have to. Yeah. We we'll also like as I like, try to um, try to like double these yeah. up. So like all of them have something on both sides except for like the TO. 253. I couldn't quite figure out what I would put in the back. I was yeah. also like, oh, it's probably going to get really hot. So I thought I would, I would leave the, the back empty. But all the other ones that we do, we have two, something on both sides. Yeah. So you get like twice as much. Yeah. You can use the you know, SYC side or the QFN side or the TQFP side. So this is a really good set. And so I think I've covered pretty much all of the most common. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to get like every DFN. There's like, there's tons of more sizes of like really small chips. But these are all the ones I think are hand solderable. Yeah. By most people. Okay. Uh, speaking of great value, great price. Yeah. Look at this. 
It's a new product. We got a new product. Accelerometer. Yeah. At the last minute, we we uh, also managed to get in a, a new sensor. Yeah. This is actually a sensor I've been. Uh, I've actually had this on my desk for a really long time. We finally pick and place yeah. them. These are the ADXL 345. Uh, digital accelerometers. They're sort of the uh, big sister to the ADXL335. It's really common. Um, we've had a bunch of analog accelerometers in the store. Yeah. We have uh, two. Uh, and so now I wanted to add a digital accelerometer. The ADXL345, they you know have uh, low drift. They're pretty easy to use. Yeah. You know, they have a wide range. They're not, they're not the super cheapest accelerometer, but they're, they're good quality. I like them. And uh, we have a library that goes with them. Yeah. This breakout board makes it 5-volt safe, so you can use 5-volt I2C or SPI. Both will be uh, out of the box, and it comes with some mounting holes. Uh, K-Town did a really good job with this board. Yeah. So we're up to here. And what are we charging? Uh, 1995. 1995. I know for a fact there are companies charging $40 for these. 40 bucks. Well, I think 20 bucks. I think 20 bucks is a better price. I think it's okay. Yeah. Just saying. Okay. All right. And it comes with, oh, sorry, and it comes with a regulator. Yeah. Also, so you can run this off of 5 volts or 3 volts. I don't know, people want it, some accelerometers. So now we have gyros, accelerometers, magnetometers, multiple different types of accelerometers. We have, like, every kind of ometer. Yeah, we're, work, we're working through the ometer list. We've got the ometers. <laughs> yeah. All Tell right. your doctor. Yeah. You got, you got your <laughs> I daily, got a case of the ometers. Yeah, An only ate a freaking carrot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the all right. Of ometers. Okay, uh, so with all that. All that. Is the new products. That is a lot of new products. Whew. That was new products. We all covered right. everything. A little bit of a reminder, folks. Uh, Snow's Code, 10% so, off. Everything you saw. Okay. Um, I got a, I got a couple quickies for it's not out yet. Okay. All right. So and then we're gonna do some questions. Top secret. It's not out yet. Don't ask. You ready? Yeah. First one. Another animation from the upcoming game. Circuit Playground. I'm not gonna talk about the title quite yet. Well, yeah, I will. It's gonna be probably called Mo's Resistance. So that's the first animation. Here's the next animation. Yeah. If you're see, gonna sh see a little blow smoke monster. Whoop. There he is. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Watch out. Hey, watch out. Whoop, burp, burp. Watch out. Okay. And then <laughs> the big news. Adafruit Gemma. That's right. We have another wearable electronics platform. I already hate the floor and I'm on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, we compete with ourselves. So this is Gemma. And, and those are uh, Becky's nails. Those are Becky's nails. And nail uh, do you want to talk about what the what the Gemma is, Lady Ada? Yeah. So actually after we did the floor, like immediately afterwards, I was already like, man, this thing is like too big. Yeah. I wanted to make something even smaller and lower power and simpler to use. And so um, I was playing around with um, using uh, the AT Tiny 85, which is, you know, this 8 kilobyte little 8-pin yeah. oh, chip. Do you have a Gemma to show on the overhead? Yeah, I can show this. Look, so it's this real. Is, this, is one of my, this is my sample board. Yeah. And um, the neat thing is that there's a bunch of USB stacks for it that let you bootload it over USB. So I'm kind of experimenting with a bunch of those and uh, trying them out. I mean, they all work, but I kind of want to see if I can optimize things a little bit. So it's got a micro USB connector. Micro USB, super slim. And there's a chip. There's a reset button here. It's a little waterproof reset button. It's very small. You kind of have to use your fingernail. And yeah. um, there's a regulator here and then just some you know, basic power handling stuff. And um, it only has a couple pins. It only has three digital output pins, but we got it working with our um, Flora Pixels. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I thought, you know, and it has some analog input. So I thought, you know, you could use this for like, um, maybe have like a simple analog sensor or simple digital button or something, and then some LED output. And uh, it can drive like a dozen pixels. Yeah. So I thought that'd be fun. So we're excited. This is the smallest wearable platform out there that we know of. I think it's at the size of like, it's like an inch. It's like a half quarter. I don't yeah. Know. How big I, is it? Well, we could find a quarter, but it's about the size of a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. It's... It's pretty amazing. I don't have any change on me. So. Anyways, um, but yeah, it's definitely like smaller than our watch. Yeah. For sure. I don't think we have any change around here. Yeah. Smaller than this button. It's hard to carry change in this modern this, world. This I know is um, this I believe. Is I'll 30. grab a quarter later. Next time this we take a 30, photo. This is thirty millimeters, so it's it's like less than thirty millimeters. Yeah. Okay. This is a standard button size. Okay, so that was one of our favorite segments. The spec prototype. Nothing. It might so look a little bit different. Don't ask. Okay, the on to the questions. questions. We're going to do questions. Question, question, question. We're going to try to But not about these. some of the things that we said. Yeah, okay. Not out yet. Here we go. Ask your engineering questions to Lady Ada. Well, I put stuff away. 
Why don't you put stuff away? Well, I'll put stuff away. Hinge. Okay, can the peristaltic pump handle a dispensing acid to change the pH in water? Yeah, totally. Uh, you just have to make sure that you have whatever tubing you use, the silicone tubing, just make sure that the acid won't affect the silicone tubing. That's a chemistry question, but the pump itself, as long as it's liquid, it can pump it. It'll, it, you know, that's not the problem. The problem is just making sure that the tubing you have is compatible. How much current can a uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO pin safely source or sink? I don't know exactly, but I'd say four milliamps is safe. Okay. So use ultra bright LEDs with big resistors. Can something written in LabWorks be converted over to Raspberry Pi or Arduino? I don't, LabWorks? I don't know LabWorks. Okay. Sorry. I don't know what LabWorks is. Uh, John wants to know, did he leave his desk light on? Light on? No. No. Okay. You're safe. Uh, next up. Is it okay to use the as seen on Adafruit Show Intel sticker on a PCB design for a project I'm planning to show off? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so. Just keep in mind that um, uh, it has our logo, so don't sell it. And then uh, it, it's based on the Google Hangout logo, and uh, we asked them if we can use it. So, I don't know, send an email. Just don't sell it. That's the only thing, because yeah. that's where you might get in trouble. Yeah, just make it clear that it's not yeah. like a Google product or an Adafruit yeah, product. Yeah, if it's just for like a school project to show off, it's totally fine. Um, are we ever? Are we going to start carrying the AVR at Mega ATX Megas? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I haven't really gotten around to playing with them, but uh, if there's a cool project that uses them, definitely we'll carry it. How much did your operating budget jump moving into the new place? It's an interesting question. Um, we were kind a budget. of yeah. We we were in two different places trying to manage the growth of the company. So the company has uh, doubled in revenue and employees. So if because I'm a numbers person. Um, we're actually spending less than ever, believe it or not, because the revenue has increased more. Um, we're actually Percent percentage. Yeah. So percentage-wise, uh, it's a deal um, because uh, everything has grown and uh, and kind of gone through the roof lately. Yeah. Um, some Adafruit news. We just hit another record month in uh, number of orders. There are about 13,000 orders 13, right now. 13,000 orders a month. Yeah. And we're not even done with the month. We're not even done with the month. So it might be up to yeah. 15,000 orders? It could be. All right. Uh, next up. Have you thought of electronic electronic stick on fingernail stuff for women? No. Mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, Interesting idea. Let's see. Uh, will you make a breadboard-friendly voltage current meter with seven-segment LEDs? We do have a really uh, great uh, current meter in the store, as a little panel meter. Uh, I would check that out. Uh, it works really good. Okay. Uh, next up. Is the 4 milliamp Raspberry Pi limit per pin or total between all pins? It's per, per pin. Okay. Uh, next up, can you sell the Arduino Splur? Uh, we'll have them the second Arduino lets. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, right they they're, have exclusive with Radio Shack. Yeah, and then we can't, we'll, we're not allowed to yet. Yeah, and as soon as they allow us to sell them, we absolutely will. We have an order booked, but you know they they were not going to fill it until they yeah. the exclusive's over. Uh, do you know anybody who's written a library for your four-digit seven-segment display backpack for the MSP430? I don't know, um, but if anybody's written any of our LED backpacks uh, code for the MSP430, which I think somebody did, the code will be very, very similar because it's, okay. it's all the same driver chip. Next up, um, the PN532 NFC controller breakout board works on the Raspberry Pi, doesn't fit, and needs soldering on it by the user? Is that correct? Wait, what? Works on the Raspberry Pi. We do have a tutorial. It? We do have a tutorial for the PN532 breakout board on the Raspberry Pi. Check and out what needs learning. soldering on it by the user? So uh, some header, I think. Some header. Okay. Check the tutorial. I don't. I don't know the tutorial. Okay. Thing. Can you make a clock like GPS to AT Tiny eighty five I squared C or SPI display? Uh, AT Tiny eighty five might be able to do it, but you have to be able to parse the GPS uh, input, which I don't know. That's the part I'm not sure about. But mm -hmm. the AT Tiny eighty five can definitely control our seven segment backpacks because somebody did it. Okay. Any plans of KTOM making a kit of the super cheap LPC eight hundred dip version of ARM? as you have ARM boards already? That's a good question. You should talk to Kate. <laughs> Maybe post in the forums. Uh, He's in the forums. If you post in the forums, he'll probably answer. Summon yeah. the K-Town. How about save for later buttons on the Adafruit site? Well, we have a wish list of that. OK. Uh, let's see. As you guys grow, how important is inventory tracking becoming more and more needed? All I do all day is inventory tracking. We have a predictive inventory That's system. That's like my entire job. Yeah, we have a predictive inventory system, <laughs> and, and we're getting really good at it. And 
each person in the company uh, does get training on how our inventory system works. Our inventory is how we how we run. There's an interesting article, I think it was in the New Yorker, about the Cheesecake Factory, that how they got inventory down so they have like 94% Efficiency, yeah. something incredible, because they could do predictive inventory on guest profiles when people would we like do, order we stuff. We do have an extremely complicated uh, inventory system that I I started building, and then also um, Daigo, our our CTO, helped finish yeah. um, a couple years ago. So we've been running the same inventory system for like three or four years now. Yeah, um, it's gotten much better and much more complicated. Everything is inventoried. Um, yeah. However, we are still out of stock on some stuff because, like, I'll order something. Like, for example, I ordered these Leatherman multi-tools. And, like, usually it takes yeah. two weeks to get them. Like, the last five years... They just years, didn't ship them for f- four months. But then for some reason that we still can't figure out, they took four months to ship them instead of two weeks. And there's, like, not a lot we can do when our suppliers can't provide. Like, there could be something downstream. Like, also, these RGB, make the, these RGB displays that we use for um, the shields, they were also back ordered for two months usually they take like you know 40 days and they t- took instead 80 days because um the company that makes the, the you know the negative glass in japan wasn't doing business with the you know chinese factory that made the lcd module part because of like some political things so like there's a lot of stuff that even though you have an inventory system you can't necessarily control yeah okay i'm gonna try to go through a couple more really quick uh where do you buy the blue workbenches from these well, are from global industrial, global industrial? Okay, uh, I have a conformal co- a PCB that is a tiny slide switch. Can I code it too? Uh, you will want to tape over the slide switch. Okay. Before you conform Are there lipo it? batteries to micro USB batteries or adapters you recommend for tracking your Raspberry Pi mobile? Um, not that I know of. We have a handy uh, USB battery pack that has a lipo in it, and that works really well. Okay. Let's see. Yes, the U currents made through customs. And we have some microcurrents in stock. We got half yeah. of them. Yeah, we got about half of them. Okay. Oh, do we sell conductive paint? Nope, not yet. We don't yet. We want to evaluate all the conductive paints before we decide on which ones to carry because there's a couple different ones. We do have these really great conductive ink pens, though, that are silver based. Uh, they work really well. Okay. Let's do the uh, trivia question. Oh. Whew. Okay. That was a good speed run. Thank you. You did I'm good. Gl- I'm glad I could help you. I love talking inventory. Yeah. All right, trivia question time. I do a lot of inventory. What are the rules of the trivia question, Lady Ada? Um, if you've won a, a fabulous prize from us already, please don't enter the contest so yeah. other people can win. Even though we've moved locations, this rule still applies. The first person with the correct answer that we think is correct yeah. spelling... We're going to give away a watch. ...is uh, the winner. Yeah. You get a watch, you pick which color you want. You can pick what color you want. Uh, as long as we have it in stock, I think that would be best because that way we'll be able to ship it to you immediately. Um, what's, yes, the prize is the watch... Don't complain if you don't win. <laughs> All, right. The, uh, All right. All right, you ready? Question? Here's a question. What chip does the new Adafruit Gemma run? Which chip? The brains. The brains. Is that it right there? Congratulations, Adan 39. Yeah, D Dan 39. Or A Dan. D Dan? Yeah, I, think I can't it's even read. D Dan. D Dan 39. Congratulations. It is the AT Tiny. That's it. 85. You got it. Nice work. Email support. I would have given extra credit for ATTiny85V. Yeah, email support adafruit.com and you get your choice of color of the one of the watches. That's voltage range. Not as important. Okay. All right. Uh, so um, last week was our last week at our previous location. That, um, it's now going to A little turn sentimental. To, it's going to turn to an architecture firm. Probably. Um, someone's going to have a fantastic time there. We grew the business and everything. The only downside of this big move and us moving uh, our personal lives, too, is uh, no pets here at the Adafruit factory. So right. um, what we're going to do Not is... Not a good pet place. Yeah, what we're going to do each week is have a little video of MOSFET. So here's uh, MOSFET's video from today that he made just it's, for you. <laughs> to prove he's still alive, that yeah. we, didn't, we didn't like stash him in a box. We do have a, a video of him. Yeah, so here he is. So we're going to show Live MOSFET. Cat. All right, MOSFET, you retired out from Ask an Engineer. What are you going to do? Sit on the couch all day? Yeah. And he is done. And that's, that's pretty that's, much his life right that's now. That's pretty much all he does is I lay on the couch, and then he gets on the couch and then, like, lays on me in purse. Yeah. So. And then he refuses to get up. 
All right, so future shows, we're going to have a tour of the space. Um, people have asked for that before. We're actually going to be able to do it. Um, lots of cool stuff going on. This right now, this is um, the, the kidding area. So this is like, I don't know, six or seven um, uh, production desks that we do kidding. We'll have all sorts of this things here. This is our here. CTO. This is it IT right yeah, here? Yeah, we have one, IT. One desk over here. Yeah. Um, we have... Uh, there's some of the shipping stuff over here. So we'll do a tour later. Um, John and, and Becky's desk in the big giant photo area, I call it the art club, is over there. Um, lots of cool stuff. Uh, we'll show more and more as we settle in here. So uh, thank you again, everyone. Um, we'll see everyone. Do you, do, you, do you want to tell them about the, the high-speed connection? Next week? No. Well, yeah, this week is our first week also um, broadcasting in full HD. Yeah. Um, this is the the broad, this is the connection speed. We have 80 down and uh, 69 up. Um, depending on what's going on, it's, it can be up to 100 up and 100 down. And we have another internet connection that we're putting in. And we're also going to start experimenting with live feeds on uh, lots of the equipment here and lots of other things going on at Adafruit. We think the future is 24-7 HD broadcasting inside of an electronics factory. So, you know, I work back from that. We're, we're not going to be here 24-7, yeah. but the robots are. <laughs> yeah. Our internet connections cost more than our rent, for our, for, which is kind of funny. That's, uh, Do you think really all of them? Yeah, all of them together. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot oh. of bandwidth. So um, we're going to use we it. We should probably like, have some sort of budget or something. <laughs> no, we do. We do. I mean, the, the, we, it's part of my job. Uh, we do. The, the most important thing is to keep the company running. So uh, two to three, we actually have four uh, internet connections because yeah. we can't go down. Um, we have a uh, satellite connection, or it uses a microwave dish, mm. not a satellite. Um, we have uh, a fiber optic light connection. Yeah, we, have we have light a internet. business class connection, and we also, we also Air have a, a DSL line if needed. Copper internet. Yeah, and um, because this is you know we're an internet company, we have we to have do this. We have all elements. Um, handled except fire. We have to fit yeah. fire internet. So um, we think it's Perfect. important and we also want to share more of what we do here and we okay. want to do it in beautiful HD and that's what we're starting to do now. Uh, when we build something on the pick and place you'll be able to see it. We think it's important. Yeah. So okay. Okay great. With that being said, thank you everyone. Yeah we maybe we'll try to get a live cam so we can see MOSFET from here. I don't know. We'll try. All right. That's kind of, I don't know. It's a little, <laughs> cre <laughs> it's a little creepy. It's a little creepy. Yeah. All right. We'll see everyone next week. Okay. Here is your moment of Zener.